wellnesscouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. You're listening to A Quirky Journey, the healthy family podcast with your hosts, Joe Witten and Leah Follett. Welcome to A Quirky Journey. Join us as we share our family's journeys to good health. You'll find plenty of inspiration, tips and recipe ideas, as well as stories from everyday people who've struggled and overcome health problems and diet challenges in their own families. I'm Jo Witten, author of the blog and book Quirky Cooking, and I'm here with my friend Leah Follett. And today we're going to have a bit of a catch up. Hi, Leah. Hi, Jo. How are you? I'm good. It's been a while. (laughs) It has been. I've missed you. I missed you too. We've, we've had, I had like three weeks where I couldn't um, do the podcast well, because I was you couldn't, so sick. You couldn't speak. No, you couldn't I lost speak. my voice. So we were sending, <laughs> we were down to sending text messages yeah. um, and then you ran away to the other side of the world and abandoned me. So I had issues there. <laughs> <laughs> abandonment and, and then issues. The, and then the universe said no and has wrecked my internet. So and recording and doing Skype calls and everything has really been slow. We've just had one oh, thing after another. Skype but, doesn't hey, love that's us. Way, yeah, I know. It doesn't love us, but, you know, oh, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? That's right. So today we're going to catch you all up on what we've been up to. So there was a bit of a catch-up sort of last week I um, – shared my interview that I did while I was in UK. So you know what was happening basically while I was away. But um, Leah and I haven't actually gotten to catch up properly, so we're going to... No, and I didn't listen to that interview either. Oh, there you go. So now you really don't know. I really don't know. know. I'm super in the dark. (laughs) So, And we've got a few changes to share with you, so we'll talk about all that as well. So um, Leah also has been to the Mind Forum, which I missed out on, but we are going to try and get an interview with the lady who runs the Mind Forum. And, um, Leslie! Yes. Oh, she's fabulous. And get some info on that because um, Leah and Alex and others that I know that went to it were raving about it and I really feel I missed out, so I oh, want to know all the news. It was, it, you totally did. And I'm Charlotte <laughs> Carr was there oh. and, you know, like, it was it was so good, and for me, I haven't seen my practitioners for some, well since we've been down here, which is over twelve months, okay. and they were all there. And uh, William found out that they were going to be there, and he made the effort to come in. It was Sunday that he yeah. came in, and he just sat there and just waited. He actually attended two of the lectures. Dr. Uh, Mark Cohen did his talk, and William got there, and he had all his art so art supplies. So he had his watercolors out and his sketch pad, and he just uh, painted and asked questions. You know, like, and Dr. Mark Cohen is so good, or Professor Mark Cohen is so good because it's so real with him, with oh, what he's trying to good. talk about, and it's, he relates it to other things, and he's very passionate about the environment and the bioaccumulation of, you know, chemicals in the water. Mm. And, you know, he ta- he, the thing that William really picked up William's ears was that he said that when they find a whale that has passed on, or they extract the earwax and then do it like core testing, like they do ah. with Arctic snow ice. And they actually break it up into little pieces and test the little samples so they can see how polluted the water was at this age in the animal's life and at this age and at this wow. age. So it's not – and then they work back it's to the timeline and then they can see what was happening in the currents and globally and, you That's know, amazing. whether we've had any oil leaks and all that kind of stuff. So, how about that? You know, like it was so just – it wasn't just about – it wasn't just body science. It was no. just it was global science, and there's you know like how Brilliant. it impacts on everyone. So well, that's good that William got to experience a little yeah, bit. Yeah, as it. you can imagine, William just loved it. Mm. Well, yeah, it was his you know from from a kid who didn't want to leave a house, who was sitting in the audience of a thousand people, practitioners, parents, carers, wow. whatever, and he just saddled up there with his art supplies, and he just did his watercolors, and and that was great. Oh, and then he him. met um, a little girl there. Her name was Holly so- Somerville. Yeah. Um, and she's the same age as William Aww. and comes from a autism background as well with similar problems. Yeah. And now, like just last week, she spoke at the UN. <gasps> I could not believe it. Oh, like, my goodness. Here's this little girl. She's blonde. She's got, you know, got this short cut fringe and she's got freckles and she's just adorable. Aww. And when she got up in front of us, she, you know, she spoke about who she was and how far she's come. 
and you know, she was incredible to listen to. Aww. And then she decided she was going to sing and sh- she can <laughs> sing like this really? kid in the recovery. And I'm just sitting there going, holy, oh, you had no idea. I had wow. goosebumps on my goosebumps over this child. Anyway, her and William ended up sitting down doing painting together. Oh, and it was cute. brilliant, you know. <laughs> so they met the practitioners. He caught up with all these practitioners, which he was really, you know, because he just he loves his doctors. He loves yeah. his naturopaths and he, really he loves everything. Him, yeah. uh, they become family. They yeah. really do. And then he met this girl, which is the same age, and they just hit it off. And, and just like. You're doing what next month? You're speaking at the – and she's like, yeah, with the Dalai Lama and Richard Attenborough. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> holy moly. You know, like, oh. Oh, that's so, oh, so brave. Exciting. Wow. Good on her. It's like, it's like when she talks about it, it's like she's talking about the neighbour. It's, you know, like yeah. Bob from down the road. She it's, doesn't even yeah. – it's like, oh, yeah, I'm the Dalai Lama and <laughs> it's amazing. just so matter of fact that, yeah, haven't you had a conversation with the Dalai Lama? <laughs> Yeah, like, not where have you been? <laughs> so, yeah, I have no idea what she was speaking at, but it was a thing in Sydney for, I know, it was a thing in Sydney for the UN that she came down for. So okay. incredible wow. person, just wow. incredible. So Loved it. It's amazing the differences that you see with kids, isn't it, when when they are um, Well, <laughs> it doesn't matter whether it's kids or adults, but yeah, it's well, just the, when the body's working, when you give it what it needs, it mm. just does profound things it does it does exactly what it's supposed to do yeah. it's brilliant it is brilliant. it's a perfect design it is and so I, I think so I'm, happy. I'm amazed with Isaac just the you know the changes and how well he's doing and take the way that he went couldn't do his schoolwork at all and now he's thriving on algebra and saying how much he loves it it's just like what <laughs> So. Yeah, and he so would love that, you know, because he's into yeah. all those algorithms when it comes yes. to, you know, and he's such a thinker as well, especially yeah. with his Rubik's Cube. And yep. Oh, man. Yeah. It's just – and how many children, I, I suppose – I, I get a little upset because, well, in my when I grew up, mm. I had troubles and I struggled and I'm like, well, how much of that was food and nutrition? Yeah. How much of it was emotional balance? How yep. much of it was my lifestyle? Mm. And how greatly that affected my learning yes. and my processing abilities? And that's what so I- it's like every person deserves to have a clean or well, the cleanest body they can manufacture for themselves or for yeah. their family mm. so then they can thrive and they can be successful, in, you know, in their own right. And, you know, on their own terms. And enjoy life without all the um, hang-ups of illness and things. I mean, you, everyone's going to get sick sometimes, but, I mean, the constant, mm. the fog that a lot of people live in, the fog just they think that's normal because they don't know anything else. But Well, well that's right. Yeah, it's, it's like a brain um, fog. <laughs> well, I just look back and think about, you know, childhood and like I was one of those kids that every year the report card said she tries really hard. Mm. But I was never successful in all those things and it's yeah. not until later life that I've been able to clean up. You know, 36. Mm. I'm going to be 36 soon. Oh, Ooh. no, Mark turned 36. I'm going to be 35. I'm younger. <laughs> um, but, you know, like it's taken me to this point to be f- and feel successful mm. and I haven't been able to do that until I cleaned up my mind, my heart and my body. Yeah. And. You know, if that had happened sooner for me as a child, you know, like I don't know where I'd be now. I wouldn't yeah. be here mm. I, and I need to be – being here is perfect for me right now and right yeah. in this space and That's I'm, right. I'm going to own it yeah. and I'm proud of my journey but at the same time, how much could our kids achieve if we just cleaned up that one thing, if we just looked at their, you know, those, those small things that we were always talking about, those incremental changes mm. and that's going to have the, most, the biggest effect on who they are and how successful they are or how successful they feel in their own body. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting. Well, I really look forward to talking to Leslie. Hopefully we can fit fit that in soon. And, yeah, um, Alex we need to also. stalk her because, yeah, yeah and Alex. Alex yeah. was amazing. Her presentation, she was just cute as a button. Oh, she just and, is. <laughs> well, she just is. She was cute as a button. She had samples of everything she made up there. She did, she did you. She was telling <laughs> you. <clears throat> and she got up there and there was like a whole room and she had samples and you know while she was speaking the samples were all coming out and being circulated and she oh, was cooking wow. and she was she was just on key with everything she was She's in the zone doing... and what she delivered she was incredible i loved oh, her so if good. anyone's got a chance to see any of her stuff or well, go she, and see yeah, you know does... any of her workshops yeah she does workshops and she also does stuff with kids like cooking classes with kids especially on the school holidays and she's amazing yeah. Alex Stewart, yeah. that is, if anyone's wondering who we're talking about. She's yeah. in Sydney. 
Yeah. Yeah. So um, we should go back to before all that and um, back when we <laughs> before did Before I got last... excited. <laughs> no, that, no, that's good. I wanted you all to right. talk about that. Um, but back be- when we first had the pause in our podcasting. <laughs> yeah. Because of... So um, I should probably explain what happened there. Yes. So yeah, you should. I got really yeah. sick. You did. And, the um, wheels fell off your little red wagon. They sure did. And that I got so sick. I think it was almost the sickest I've ever been, although I, <clears throat> I have been in hospital once for like one day in my life, but um, besides mm. having babies. But um, it was, they thought that it was the flu at first, but it turned out to be bacterial. <laughs> so it was a bacterial chest infection. And I think I had basically probably over the years just gotten you know, more and more busy and um, run myself down a bit, which I thought I was doing fine, which I I was raised in a family where everyone works very hard, I think, and to me my normal is not what other people's normal is. <laughs> yes, I came to, I can acknowledge that because I sit there and think, how does she do it? But we're just going to put it down to uh, evolution. <laughs> you have evolved your family historically I don't, has evolved I don't to, know about um, that. able to withhold that <laughs> I think it's okay I think it's just the fact that we are um we get excited about things and we just got to try all these there's so many things that I want to do and learn and and you know experience and teach and I know take part and in for and- someone <laughs> and for someone like your health coach that turns around and says Joe you've got to slow down take it easy take a breath I'm like, it's I, not I am, you. It's I am not so you. Dumb. So what are you talking I about? I know. I know. You, you well. No, and, yes. I, and I'd be like, well, I go and sit outside with a cuppa for five or ten minutes every afternoon. What's your problem? <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. But that's and your, then I wake that's up. That's your at, normal, and that's what at, you're conditioned to be. So yeah. wake that up was a wake up call for me. Or whatever, mm. and and yeah, it's like full on all day. And I quite often have a little nap in the afternoon for twenty minutes or whatever. Oh, but. It, even I've started the siesta. I've oh, taken a leaf so out of that good. book. If I get but really, mine, if I get not a really, little nap. Mine's a big nap. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you've changed it a bit to me. Yeah, <laughs> I just get so so busy. Sometimes I'll stay up too late, which I have been really working on. Leah, you'll be proud of me. I've been going I'm to bed. Always proud of oh, you. I've been going to kisses. Bed. <laughs> I've been going to bed at nine thirty or ten usually. Now and then I'll stay mm. a bit late, but mostly I've been trying to do that and. Um, I think that really has helped. But, yeah, when I got really sick, I had to stay in bed for two and a half weeks. So that was really hard. But yeah. actually um, I was so sick that I couldn't really think of getting up anyway. I think it was the hard thing was knowing that I had this UK trip coming up and I needed to be well. So um, my lovely naturopath, Samantha, um, gave me a full-on course of every kind of vitamin, herb, and probiotic you can think of. <laughs> Along with the essential oil. <laughs> oh, and, and every oil. Oh, my goodness. And, you, should have seen my, you should have seen my bag for, for UK. I had like 20 different oils in a little bag in my carry-on luggage, and she's like, now yeah. do this with this one and do that with that one, and before you do this, do that, and before you – I was just like, oh, my head is spinning. <laughs> I know, but so she's many such vitamins. a support. You oh, can, she was you amazing. Can get- and you didn't get sick when you went away. I didn't get sick. I I, by the, I did end up having – okay, so this is where it um, gets a bit sad for my GAPS journey. I did end up having to take antibiotics. So yeah, that was – but that's okay. Yeah, and that was – I that's was okay. trying dreadfully hard to do everything natural so that I could, you know, keep my gut health journey going. <laughs> and I got to the end of two and a half weeks and I had four days left until I had to fly out. And I just went, I'm not going to make it. I was still in bed. I was still exhausted. My chest was aching and I was crying and just going, I'm not going to make it. And so um, I gave in and, and took the antibiotics that the doctor gave me. And um, within about three days, I felt heaps better. And then the next day I left. Um and I still took all the natural stuff, obviously, and working on the probiotics and everything. Um, and that'll just be something I'll have to keep working on now for a while to get the gut mm. flora happy again. But yeah, but it got me to where I needed to be, and and I even well, and we've always said that you know 
our modern medicines are brilliant in their own right, but mm. it's knowing when to use them. Yeah, and, and not overdoing it's them. It's a last resort. Yes. It's, you try and do everything to support your body to do the job it's here to do and that can do. And mm-hmm. if, if you can't do that and two weeks to be sick, two weeks to give your body a chance to get on top of it, like mm. that's – that was a good go, Joe. Yeah. You should be really happy with that. And I just kept – it would start to get well and then I would sort of go backwards again. And if I stood up for half an hour and tried to help the kids in the kitchen or something, it would just go backwards. And so I was just like, no, this is not going to work. <laughs> if I had to longer, the big guns. If I had longer, I would have stayed – like if I wasn't going away, I would have kept trying the natural. But yes. my kids were amazing. I just have to mention this. Um, the whole time because honestly I was in bed for two and a half weeks and my kids just took over and they were making the broths and they were making the dinners and the breakfast, lunch and snacks and everything, um, cleaning, looking after me, bringing me my food, um, you know, tidying up and it was just such a blessing that I had, you know, worked with them all these years to teach them this and sometimes it takes getting really sick and chucking them in the deep end for them to really do what you know that they can do. But Uh they just did amazingly, and especially my eldest, India. She's just – it's like she suddenly grew up. It was like she had – and then when I left, they were already used to doing all that, so they were fine while I was away um, for two and a half weeks. Oh, so maybe there was a purpose for your illness. Yes, I know, and I keep coming back to this thinking it really worked out quite well because I was here, they could ask me anything they wanted to, but they were doing it. And then when I left, they were doing it without me here. (laughs) Yeah. Mm, I think that's beautiful. That's amazing. But how empowering for them as well. Oh, and everyone, like I do have this friend, young friend, my assistant, who comes about two or three times a week in an afternoon for a couple of hours and she would help them like she'd come over on a Monday and she'd help India get the meal plan done for the week write out the grocery list they'd go shopping together they'd get everything they needed for the week and then she'd help India make a couple of meals and breads and snacks and then she'd go home and then for a couple of days India would be running it then she'd come back and check on them help them make a few more things make sure and she wrote um, messages to me over in the UK saying well I went over there today Everything was tidy. The fridge was cleaned out. Um, the meals were sorted. I really didn't have much to do, so I won't go tomorrow. I'll go another day. <laughs> and I was like, wow. So, oh. so that was so good. I was so proud of them. And it So was- you're going to book a U.S. trip now, a U.S. <laughs> book tour? I wish. <laughs> They survived uh, the UK one off to the US? Oh, uh, no. Anyway, Someone. so, yeah, and I'm very thankful to my assistant, Afire, also because she she was very helpful. Yeah, but that that was really good for my kids, a bit of a growing up thing, I think. I try not to go Mm. away too often. Like people always say to me, how do you do it? You know, you say you homeschool but you're going away and um, how do your kids cope? And so I'll just mention here because I know everyone always wonders this. Um, My kids are 17, 15, 13 and 11. They're all about to have their birthday so it'll be 18, 16, 14 soon um, in another few weeks. Um, And my assistant obviously is a big help my husband's here he he shift works so he's sort of off and on home for five days in a row or whatever but um, it sort of makes it easier and then the parent my parents are across the road so it does help to have all that but the biggest help really is um, that you know I've taught the kids right from really young to do the housework, to do the cooking and to help me out. And obviously usually I'm in charge and and they don't have as much to do because I'm getting them to focus on their schoolwork and all of that kind of thing. But when I when I need them to, they can take over. So that's that's a good thing. And with the schoolwork too, a lot of people wonder about this. They have a um a very detailed schedule that a lot of it they can go through on their own and do it um together. And my mm-hmm. eldest also helps with that. And my assistant, when she's here, she helps them, checks on stuff. And my dad's very good with helping them. And so they do quite well. But, yeah, when I come home, obviously, we have to catch up anything that they missed. So, yeah, it worked out pretty good. And the trip was amazing. So um, shall I tell you a bit about that? 
Uh, yes, because I didn't listen to the other interview that you did with. Was it the lunchbox doctor? <laughs> yeah. I did see it come through my thing, the lunchbox doctor. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Jenny. Oh, well, I haven't listened to that. So in, inform me, fill me okay. in. Um, I'll just give you a bit of an overview. So yeah. I um, flew to Edinburgh first and I spent five days there because I built in a bit of time for um, getting over the flight because I thought I'd still be not well. Um, I en- ended up cancelling one class in that first five days because it wasn't really it didn't have a lot of bookings it was a it wasn't a thermomix class or anything it was a seminar so I thought I'll just cancel that one and I'll just have the one class in the five days and I'll have time to get over you know any lingering bits of sickness and the flight and everything but I was actually full blast from the time I hit the ground I only had one hour nap that first day because I got there at lunchtime and I was so well um it just was amazing so I saw the sights and did the class there in Edinburgh with the Thermomix team there and with my friend Chris, who's a chef there. Oh, sorry, he was a chef. He's not now. Um, and we had a lot of fun with that. And um, everyone sort of said, oh, you'll have a lot of trouble eating there. It's very stodgy food. Um, you won't find GAPS-friendly meals when you're travelling. You're going to have a hard time. You're going to have to get people to make you food. So mm-hmm. everywhere I went in my whole trip, all my friends had meals ready for me when I arrived at their houses. It was so gorgeous. But I actually had no trouble with being out. Um, I found that wherever yeah. I went, there was always real food if you went to the right places. There was always meat and veggies or you could say, you know, um, I'll have the roast dinner but leave the potatoes off and leave the gravy off and just add a bit of salad or some extra veggies and, and I was fine. Mm. Um, it's not as hard. Once you get to that no. full caps place. No, it was fine. Um, it's not as hard as you think. No, and, you know, everywhere you go they've got fish or they've got steak or they've got, um, you know, basic roast-type dinners and you just tell them no gravies and no um, chips and mashed potato, just add different veggies. And I never had a single restaurant, cafe or anything say, oh, no, we can't change the meal. They all went, yep, no problem, piled on the veggies. Um, yeah. I found cafes with almond milk and coconut milk for ca- cappuccinos and, um, there was, there, oh, it was <laughs> Excellent. great. I, I honestly had no, and that was all through the UK. And the best thing, I went to this restaurant in London called Pure Taste and it was a Paleo Gaps restaurant, Western Price Paleo Gaps. All that, wow. All that. And so you could. You should have done this as a documentary. You should have oh. done like Joe, Joe Whitten's Gaps Tour of the UK. <laughs> I took photos of everything we ate at that restaurant and even all the pages of the menu because it was amazing. Um, if anyone goes to London, you've got to go to Pure Taste. It's just beautiful. And it was so well presented. It was lovely. I went to a couple of really nice restaurants with people and, um, yeah, didn't have a bit of trouble. And that was probably the only place where I could actually eat dessert because the rest of the places had dairy or sugar or you know, mm-hmm. gluten or something in the dessert. But I'm used to that. So I just will have like a cup of tea after dinner or something and not worry about dessert. But this place had the most decadent desserts you could imagine that were gaps friendly. I was in heaven. <laughs> Oh, some people are just Shut so up. clever. Like I know. when I do, I, I do my desserts and, eh, you know, mine are just so basic. I oh, don't, I don't have that. Well, no, they are. They're not, you know, they don't have lots of processes and there's not lots of things that are, I just don't have the time. Well, or the exactly. I, but most I draw all over the them time. on Facebook. Yeah. But, you know, like it's not until you get out of it. And that's what makes it all the better, I think, is because you yeah. don't have those, even though you have your little desserts at home that are, you know, within the GAPS yeah. program or whatever you really don't have a lot of them and you don't mm. crave them. But when you go out and there's something really special, it's like, hallelujah, someone yeah. loves me and you just, no, well, I just, <laughs> I'm having that and that. I just, oh, yeah, and I did, don't worry. Yeah, well, oh, I stop I, at one I dessert. Could hardly, you know, I could hardly walk afterwards. A- <laughs> uh-huh. Chocolate mousse that was so rich, it was like, oh, my goodness, I'd never tasted chocolate mousse so rich. And um, brownies and little Pretty little meringues and I hope you got takeaway baggies. No, I should have. You totally should have. <laughs> like, can I, I have, want it. Can now. I have one of everything and yeah. I'll have one of everything to take away? <laughs> I was tempted. Um, but what I was um when I got back, I actually had an email from Master Chef um from the the producers of MasterChef saying we're looking for some people in far north Queensland to be on MasterChef. Do you have anyone you could recommend? And I quickly wrote back and said, um, I'll have a think about it and 
um, while I've got you, I really think you need to do an episode where they make desserts and, and really fancy restaurant style meals that are like for special diets because I get so frustrated when I go to a really posh restaurant, like five star restaurants and Everybody else is eating these amazing desserts and I get a fruit platter. I don't want a fruit platter. I want chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and how hard is it? Like really, oh, you melt the cacao, that's you put right. the powder in with a tiny <laughs> bit of honey, you put it in the fridge, it's good to go. That's it. And it keeps forever. Surely that's they right. can have some of that stuffed away. And I think it, it needs to be mandatory. I think it does. So anyway, I, I asked them about that and they said, well, we'll have a talk to you about it. So... You never know. We might get a Master Chef yet. We might get a Gaps Edition Master Chef <laughs> episode. Or maybe not, but we can always try. Oh well, we're yeah. putting it out there. I just think it's something that it's frustrating for a lot of different diets. Um, but especially I think if you're grain free and sugar free and dairy free, that's what throws them. I think yes. like they can do gluten free, they don't have a problem with that. There's always something gluten free. Sometimes yes. there's dairy free, but sugar free or at least natural sweeteners, that mm-hmm. seems to be not so common. And mm-hmm. um, also the grain free or starch free, that throws them as well. Yeah. Anyway. It does. It does. Let's enough just, of your whinging, enough of your yeah, ranting. Let's just hope that, that they um, get us on MasterChef to show them how. Hey, Leah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe not me. I'll do the oh. tasting. <laughs> I'll do the tasting thing. You can do, yeah, they they do do tasting. I haven't seen MasterChef because it, I don't have an aerial plugged into my TV. Yeah, I, must so I haven't seen TV never, for such a long time. I think time. I've watched it a couple of times. But they do, they, they have a tasting thing. Oh, it's yeah, that show, they? isn't it, that they do and the people do the cooking and then they've got th- three chefs. The judges, yeah, the chefs that judge it, yeah. So I travelled down from Edinburgh um, down the, what coast is that, east coast sort of down there um, and did classes all down through the centre of UK as well, just little um, towns and villages and then down to London and Oxford and all those areas. So um, it was quite spread out. I did 11 classes in, in the two weeks um some of them were big classes with thermomix and some were little workshops where i went to people's homes and 10 people came and we did hands-on cooking and talking and spent like four hours together it was so much fun um and the reason why i went over there in the first place was because a group on facebook asked me if i'd please come over and do grassroots down to earth in their home workshops teaching them stuff and I just went I would absolutely love that what a great way to see the UK Um, and so that's what I did and I put in some bigger ones and a couple of chiropractor seminars as well Um, and it um, it was really really good just to see the countryside but really to meet people who are trying to you know use real ingredients and learn about cooking and um, passionate about it and it was so much fun. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Oh, you still could have taken me. Yeah, well, you should have come big and carried side, Big sigh, big tip from my shoulder. <laughs> oh, woe is me. One day, one, yeah, I even, one day when my kids are a bit bigger. <laughs> I even got the hang of um, those, all those trains and underground tubes and, oh, my goodness, in London, crazy. I got this little country girl wow. there trying to ca- drag my suitcase <laughs> through the trains. I managed it. <laughs> oh, you didn't have to take all the thermomixes. They would have just no, been no, there, no. right? Uh, you yeah, were I borrowing didn't. other people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I travel, I travel with the thermomix and there's one bag for the thermomix and one bag for me. <laughs> no, thankfully I didn't have to take the thermomix. I just went from thermomix to thermomix. It's an awful lot. Okay, well, that's all right. Oh, good. Okay, excellent. Isn't yeah. that, that that would just be a dream for some people, just a continuous line of thermomixes with clean bowls? Oh, you yes, know, cause definitely. I, I, can, clean I can never find a clean one when I want. No. Like, Damn it, I've got a wall. I think Watch I have, it. I think I have four bowls and two thermomixes, and I still go. Where's Where's a clean bowl? <laughs> That's a bit slack, dear, isn't dear. it? It is. Uh, yeah, but we okay. had lots of fun. So um, I did send out a couple of newsletters since I got home. If any of you missed them and you want to see the past newsletters, let me know, and I can um, send them out to you again. Or if you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe on my blog. But in there, um, I've I've put in some tips for traveling. There's uh, one section on 
natural ways to fight jet lag. I did really, really well with the jet lag thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so on my way over, I just basically slept everywhere I could the whole time. <laughs> well, you're used to doing that because uh, yeah. I've seen you asleep in a car park. Yeah. <laughs> in a car. Yeah. yeah. In between, Underground in car between park. between sessions. Yeah. I'm good at that. I, I practice <clears throat> I practice sleeping, like napping whenever the, I need the it. The zen of sleeping, standing up and Yeah, whenever. I could just about do that. <laughs> uh-huh. um, but also when you get there, you know, fitting into the day and going on from there and not just going to bed. But all sorts of tips and then also um, – you know, staying hydrated and all of that kind of thing. So I, that worked really well. On the way home, uh, when I got home after a couple of, I think I had two nights where I slept 12 hours, which is understandable. <laughs> but um, I didn't do too badly, so that was good. And there's also in one of the newsletters some tips on travel food for people on GAPS or paleo, the sorts of things that I took with me, um, so what kind of foods I always had in my gigantic handbag no it's not really gigantic but I just seem to (laughs) I seem to fit a lot of food it's a Mary Poppins handbag it's a Mary Poppins Poppins. do you remember the big carpet bag that's you yeah that's me my friend (laughs) my friend Lauren calls it the TARDIS handbag (laughs) oh okay it's magical (laughs) you never know what's coming out of it never oh oh, brilliant yeah excellent so hey mm -hmm. would you like to share what we're going to be doing as far as um, coming up, I suppose, yes, our cool. new form. Okay, so we, um, well, you can Matt, have- we're going to have a bit of a, a restructure because of our busy lives. Yes. Can we talk about that? Yes, let's talk about that before we finish okay. up. So um, Leah and I obviously are both flat out with our own businesses and both of us working hard to keep up with everything. And we jumped into this podcast with both feet, as we both do. Um, and we didn't realise that we had to get back to – we didn't realise we'd have people asking questions. Yeah. And we didn't realise we'd have to <laughs> reply to those. And then we didn't realise that you actually had to upload it for editing. And that had to go with a little tagline. <laughs> there are so many things that we didn't realise that we were oh, getting Oh, we sort of realised, but we didn't realise how long they'd take. So That's we, right. Yeah. That's so right. we're trying to cut down a little bit on our workload because, I mean, I've had my – wake up call that I need to be careful not to overdo it and I'm getting so sick and Leah's moving house soon (laughs) as in yeah really moving yeah that's right I've given myself three weeks actually I found out on Tuesday and I'm moving in three weeks so there you go no waiting for me no I've got limited internet at the moment as well so squeezing in and getting that organized so what we've decided with moving and everything else we're going to um, and also with our internet connection, we seem to be doing really well when two people are on a call, but when we get three mm. on a, on the same call recording, the internet just really struggles for us as far as getting a clear yeah. um, audio recorded. We're always so using we're going to try and we will you know, on occasion we'll have three people, but I think most often it'll just be the two of us. So if Joe's going to interview someone, I won't be there. Mm-hmm. Um, I will be there in spirit and <laughs> I'll have to go and listen to it once it's posted. Um, but we're going to try and do a, a little bit of that and kind of, oh, I don't know. They might be shorter and sometimes Leah will be on and sometimes she won't. And we've got other people, I have other people that have offered to help as well. Mm. Yeah, um, well, it's so, a, it kind of comes back to the quality of what we want to try and produce because up till yeah. now everything's kind of been really pushed Mm. Um, and there's a little, slight level of guilt there on my part. No, but, don't be silly. <laughs> oh dear. Um, but yes, no, we're yes. always we're always um, trying to fit it in amongst everything else. And then when we have technical issues, it's like, oh no, we don't have time and for technical issues. <laughs> no, no, and we get really upset. Like this is the third time we've actually tried to record something, and it's just we can't get the internet. We get booted off. We have the children interrupting. It's all those things that are, so those ham- are- hampering our our um our adventures in into podcast land. I'm sure lots of you understand that, uh, the the technical issues and the children and, and the busyness. But we're just but, going to do the best we can and sometimes, you know, it'll be a little bit different than it has been mm. um, and it will probably be shorter because we yes. can't always fit in but, an hour. Well, and also when you're interviewing someone, taking half an hour of their time, that that's kind of doable, but yeah. taking a whole hour is yeah. really hard for a lot of people that we want to interview to sort That's of right. structure into their busy lives because they are so busy. Like yeah. Dr. Brett Hill, I can't, there's no way I'd get a phone call with him, not even five minutes. He's so busy. <laughs> um, and he should, but, you know, to get him in, in and, and 
try and book ahead and get that half an hour block. I think that's more doable for most of the people that we're yeah. sort of after and most of the information that we're chasing. So, yeah. And I suppose it's just you and I. We get a, on a bit of a rant and a bit of a gaggle and we carry on. And, and then <laughs> This we is our catch-up time, see, This is so. our catch-up time. Yeah. Um, but I think quite possibly we might be a little more organised when it's just an interview with another yeah. person, yeah. not us. That's right. So hopefully it will still, I'm sure it will still be very interesting and that you guys will all enjoy it. We've had lots of comments from people while we've been offline saying, where's the podcast? We missed the podcast. So that's nice. Thank you, everybody. We're glad you yeah. enjoy it. It's nice to be missed. Yeah. And we do enjoy doing it. So we'll, yeah, see, we do. we'll see how we go, but we'll there will be something up every week, even if it's not Leah or if it's, um, you know, a half hour with somebody else, we'll figure it out. Mm. We'll yeah. do our best. Yes, we will. So thank you, Leah, for that catch-up. Was there anything else you wanted to mention? No, but don't go away and don't get sick because it's been <laughs> six weeks, seven, actually, no, it's been longer than that, Yeah, six because you were sick three weeks Yeah, and then you went away for two and a half, nearly three weeks, Yeah, and then we didn't get to do it last week and then, you know, like so eight weeks and it's just been too long. It has been too long. Too, too long. Uh, Let's I not do have to do go away. Again. I have to go away again soon, but we'll, we'll hopefully um, keep in touch because it'll be in <laughs> Australia. Or, oh, well, one of them won't be. One will be New Zealand. But <laughs> oh. for those of you who don't know, I've got a class in Byron Bay. Um, I've got a class and a seminar in Byron Bay over the um, weekend of the 18th, 19th, 20th. And then I've also got Tasmania, some classes in Tasmania coming up. And um, just keep an eye out for all the others in your Thermomix newsletters. There's lots of different ones coming up around Australia for the quirky cooking classes. So that'll be mm. fun. And I have a question. It, yeah, go ahead. I have a question. My turn. What's the difference between a class and a seminar? Like, um, So the classes that I do for Thermomix are seminar classes because a normal cooking class is just like 30 people to 50 people and okay. you just demonstrate dishes. But because obviously I can't be traveling all the time and doing classes all the time. We try to fit more people in. So their classes are 200 people or sometimes more. Um, so what we do is like a seminar style class in a theater lecture room. So it's, um, oh, I see. Theater style oh, that's scene. like the one you took yeah. me to. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. and I do some cooking, not as much as a cooking class, but there's samples of everything. And I talk through a lot of things and a lot of tips and, you know, my story and, tips for healthier eating and um, tips for different recipes in my book and getting the audience to share um, where they source their ingredients from locally and all of that mm. kind of stuff. It was, so it's more of a The seminar. one I went to was highly interactive, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, very interactive. It was good. It was good. So that's Excellent. there's lots of those planned for all over Australia and New Zealand this year. Cool. Very good. Hope you've got your passport ready. I have my passport ready. I've just been oh, away. Good. <laughs> just been away. It's, it's, it's not going to expire anytime soon. This is my yeah. escape package. That's I'm right. I'm gone. That's right. <laughs> I'm gone. And you know the kids can take care of themselves, so there's no That's excuses right. now. You are out of there. Mind you, if I go away for two weeks again in, a, in any time soon, I'll be dead. <laughs> no, mostly, yeah. mostly my trips are like four days away in a month, mm. so yeah. it's not too bad. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. We've got to keep Dave happy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Dave. Lots of love to Dave. Yeah. He survived. Brilliant. He got out in his kayak a few times. Oh, therapy for the poor man. <laughs> Peace and quiet. <laughs> Peace and quiet away from the children. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, well, thank you, Leah. We'll, oh, look. we'll be back hopefully next week or else I'll have um, somebody next week if Leah can. You'll have somebody She's next week. She's probably going to be flat out packing. Oh no, I'm going to try and set aside time, but we'll just have oh, to see, see how, how we go. we're going. It's yes. going to get a bit it's a bit white knuckle at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> so, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Righto. So okay. thank you everyone for listening and we hope you enjoyed it and we will be posting um more episodes obviously soon with lots of ideas and tips and recipes and all of that kind of thing coming up, especially with the interviews coming up. We've got some good ones coming up. I won't say who they are yet, except for we did mention Leslie from Mind Forum Foundation. Well, she promised that she would do one. Yes. So 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll yeah. have to track her down. And now the mind has finished, so hopefully she's got a bit yeah. more time to spend with us. And um, I've got some others booked in, so that'll be good. And if you want to have a look at our past podcasts, you can find them on thewellnesscouch.com backslash a quirky journey or on iTunes, a quirky journey. You can post questions and comments there, but I really recommend you post them on our Facebook pages because we're more likely to see them <laughs> to tell the yeah, truth. Yeah, because we only just worked out that, like, what was that? Just that before was, you got sick? That there was a heap of questions sick. on the wellness yeah. couch. So we, ha- we had done like 20 weeks of podcasts and not <laughs> realised that there was questions being posted to the wellness couch. So, we had no idea. I'm really we sorry. didn't know that we had to answer them, so. So, yeah, um, send, maybe um, you can put them there if you want and we'll try and remember to check them, but mostly Facebook page is probably the easiest way. And if you're not on my chat group, hop onto there if you like to and join that because if I don't see your question, somebody else will answer it. That's always helpful. <laughs> so oh, dear. We'd love for you to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and also check out the rest of the Wellness Couch podcasts and um, just keep working on those small changes and we'll be back next week. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> we will be. One Come of on. us will be to we share more of our journey with you. Okay. Right. Thanks, Leah. Okay. Have a great week, everybody. Bye. Bye. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.